everyone, this is a practical course tour, a very brief video, hopefully, that will just give you a sense of what you need to do for the course and how to navigate the Canvas site. Uh, if you're wondering why the uh, image is up here, that is for the course, uh, that's not Virginia Woolf, but um, it's a portrait of Gwen John, who is a early 20th century British uh, artist by her brother, Augustus John. And it happens to be the cover image of my favorite edition of Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Own, which is the first book that we'll be reading, just to let you know. I thought it was an appropriate image, and maybe we'll go back to it. Uh, best thing to do uh, as you begin to explore the course, you can take a look at this stuff. There's a picture of me there. There's a welcome video. Here's my contact information at the bottom of the home page. Feel free to contact me at any time uh, by email or by calling my cell. Uh, my office hours are by appointment, which basically means any time you want to talk about the course. If you have a difficulty, if you need to communicate, please feel free to contact me at that email and at that cell phone number at any time. But the best thing you do is to go to the main menu and hit modules. And that will take you to everything that you need for the course, including the readings. Uh, the books, I believe, are in the Temple Bookstore, all of the books that we need for the course. And I would encourage you, you know, I mean, I, I don't like reading electronic texts so much, or I like having books. I believe that they're all available, but they're also all available either as uploads or as links. Um, for instance, our first reading, Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Own, which we'll be reading in its entirety. I believe this takes you to archive.org, a copy of the thing. So yeah, that's available. So the readings, uh, first of all, are there under modules. And the syllabus will be available too soon. I mean, at this point, I, I think this, the syllabus is really not so important because I can tell you what you need to do for the course in a much more explicable way just by sending out videos and putting things up on the Canvas site. But there will be a full syllabus and a course schedule. But then that's another thing. You don't really need a course schedule because if you go to modules, you'll see that the course is um, arranged by week. This semester for us begins on Wednesday, January 17th. And it begins with a reading. And uh, that reading is from our first work, Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Own. And you'll see uh, for week one, the first day is Wednesday the 17th. That's just a header. There's nothing to click on. And there's another header, reading one, A Room of One's Own, chapter one. There's nothing to click on there. You just need to go to again, go to the reading, open the reading, and go to chapter one and read it. That's how we're doing the readings. So I'm not going to see there's chapter one. Just find chapter one of the book and read it. Uh, so yeah, as you look on the days, I don't know, section in the module, it tells you what the reading is, and then you have to go to the actual link or upload to do the reading. So I hope that that's clear. This just tells you that reading one is a room of one's own chapter one. Go to the reading and read chapter one. I'll give you page numbers sometimes too, but there's no need for for Wolf. It's just, you know, we're just going to read it chapter by chapter. Uh, so then, yeah, for Wednesday 117, there's a reading. Uh, and do the reading. That's the most important thing. You, you, to do well in this course, you need to familiarize yourself with the readings. And the readings are everything. I mean, it's the whole course. I don't lecture. Well, I do write talks. So, But, you know, it's the readings that are the most important thing. So spending time reading the book is absolutely crucial. And the students who do well in IH are the ones who do the readings and think about them. And the students who don't do well are the people who ignore the readings and just try to glom their way through. So do the readings. But then you'll find always two things uh, going along with the reading. The first are videos. I made, I'll, I have made some videos 
and we'll be making videos for every reading of the course. If you click on the reading thing, it'll take you to my YouTube channel where I say some things about the day's reading, um, five to 10 minutes. I mean, these are videos that uh, I, I will be making about each one of the readings where I share my thoughts and give you maybe some direction. Um, I don't check to see if you watch the videos. I would encourage you to do so because I think, you know, these are difficult texts and you could use some help in reading them. So I would encourage uh, watching the videos as part of the course. It's not a, uh, a substitute for doing the reading. I, I, I don't talk about everything. You need to do the readings. Okay, so we've got the reading. You know how to find now. There is always going to be a video. This is an online course, so the teacher has to do something, right? Uh, in terms of teaching the course. And my main contribution uh, to this course is the videos that I make. And then for every single reading, there's a discussion board. Just click on that and you'll find the discussion board. So for every reading, and so when I'm, you'll see that we're basically on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. And for every single reading, as well as a video, there's a discussion board. And this is your first assignment for the course. And this is your most regular assignment for the course. You have to participate in the uh, discussion board Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, so three, typically three discussion boards a week. And there'll be a prompt, like the first prompt you'll see there, according to Wolf, what must a woman have to write fiction? Why do you think she starts her book with this claim? Just sort of general question about chapter one of A Room of One's Own. Uh, just hit reply and write something. Write something thoughtful. It shouldn't just be a throwaway remark. I mean, one of the things you're trying to do is to show that you've done the reading, right? Um, so if it's just like a blank or something like really abstract and not concrete, and there's no idea there, it'd be obvious. So you're, you're, you, you want to do well in the course. And one of the reasons or one of the things you want to do is to show what you know, show your familiarity. So remember, as it says in the requirements and in the syllabus, you have to post at least twice on each discussion board to gain full credit. The first post should be your thoughts, a paragraph or two, your response, your ideas, your response, your personal response to the day's reading. Your second reply, your, your second post should be a reply, and I mean a thoughtful reply to another student's post. And that should be thoughtful in the sense that it should actually address something that the person said. It shouldn't just be, oh, that's good, or I agree. No, it's not good enough. You have to actually think about what a person has said and have something to say about it. So again, you will not get full credit for a discussion board unless you post at least twice. You can post as many times as you want. You can reply to as many student posts as you want, but you have to post at least twice. One, your own response to the prompt. The other, a reply to another student's post. So that's absolutely crucial. You'll see that there's a discussion board again for every single reading. Uh, next week, week or first week of the course, week one, there's only two days. So Wednesday and Friday, you'll see for Friday, there's reading two which is a room of one's own chapter two. Again, you access the reading through this link and you read chapter two. There's another video that I've made and there's another discussion board in which you have to, again, post at least twice, respond to the prompt, keep your thoughts, show what you know, and then reply to at least one other student post in a thoughtful way. So you'll see that I, I'm still putting together um, the videos and discussion boards for the rest of the course. This will all be done before you need to do it. But it would be good to scroll through just to see that the course is organized by week. And it's organized on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. We do not meet. I know that. We don't have any live meetings. We don't worry about that. But you do have things due at specific times. And, and first of all, that's the discussion boards. Uh, you have to participate in the discussion boards on those days. The discussion board closes on that day. The, the first reading 
Wednesday the 17th, the discussion board closes at midnight. You can't do it late. There's no late dis discussion board participation. You have to get in, this, in the rhythm of the schedule of the course. So you'll see that, yes, um, the, you know, the week next, the second week of the course, right? There's a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday reading, and there's a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday assignment. So um, that's the first thing to do to get into the regular reading of the text and the regular participation three times a week in the discussion board with the parameters that I've just uh, described. Your other regular assignment is the weekly annotation. As you'll see, this is the week one folder. It's got a section for Wednesday. It's got a section for Friday. And then always down at the bottom, there's the weekly annotation. This is the hypothesis thing. And you need to do this every week, right? So, this, so the discussion board participation is um, typically three times a week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, has to be done. That you can't, you know, we understand this, right? If you have any questions, let me know. Then there's the weekly annotation, and this is something that's due uh, on Sunday of every week, right? So I consider Sunday night to be the end of the week. So the end of the first week would be January 21st. The weekly annotation assignment needs to be done by midnight on Sunday at the end of every week. So the week one annotation is a hypothesis. Uh, that's the name of the software. So what you need to do after you click on it, you see you have to make two annotations and then reply to that of one other student. So if you, uh, if you open it up, what you'll see is there'll be excerpts from the week's reading, right? From the previous week's readings. Um, so I'll just pick and choose from all three, two or three readings, whatever it is that we've done that week. And you need to make two annotations uh, and uh, the uh, directions for making annotations are right here again under the getting started thing. That is, you basically you highlight something that you want to comment on, and then you make your comment. Like, let's just say, um, I want to comment on this thing part right here. I highlighted it. I click the annotate button here, and then I write my little thing here on it, uh, whatever, blah, 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 and then I post it, and then it's there. Right? Obviously, I don't want to keep that, but it's, it's very easy. You just highlight it and then do your annotation. And then to reply to an annotation, just hit the reply button. You know, it should be, but then it's to reply to someone else's annotation. So again, this will be every week, it'll be kind of retrospective. It'll look back on the previous week's readings as a whole. I'll give you a couple of excerpts to comment on. You make two annotations of your own and then reply to somebody else's. That's the actual uh, thing. So that's every week. So if we look back on it, we can see that there are two regular repeating assignments for this course. Uh, first are the discussion boards, which again, for every reading. So it's typically three times a week and we're on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule for that. And then the weekly annotation, which has to be done. I imagine it'd be done over the weekend after you've had a chance to think about the week's readings. You just take 10 or 15 minutes, I suppose, and do this annotation assignment over the weekend. But it has to be done by Sunday at midnight. It will close then. And then we move on to the next thing. This will all be filled in with that stuff, but this gives you a sense of what we'll read when. There will be a course schedule, too. So everything's organized by week, and then within the week on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule, there's a discussion board for each one of those days corresponding to the reading. And then there's a weekly annotation assignment. So that's the regular repeating uh, requirement for the course. What are the other requirements for the course? The personal reflections. Okay. 
what are the personal reflections? If you look at the schedule here, you'll see that, well, we're going to start out reading Virginia Woolf's book of Room of One's Own, and we're going to read it for a couple of weeks, which is typical for the books in this class. We'll spend five, between five and seven sessions, five and seven readings on them. Week two is more, and then you'll see um, there will be a personal reflection that's due. So I didn't. Yeah. So, um, right. Let me just publish this. The personal reflection will, and you can see the wolf personal reflection. That will appear, I'm sorry, let me just move it so it's actually after. Where it should be. Right. Okay, that's much better. So uh, after week two, you'll see that there will be a personal reflection that's due. The personal reflection is a short essay, a brief essay, in which you write something uh, about uh, the book. It's a very brief essay. I'm going to say um, 250 words, between 250 and 500 words, which is a very brief essay uh, on the uh, book that you've read. So it's your personal ideas. There'll be plenty of more description of that. But it will be a brief essay in which you write your own personal individualistic response to a room of one's own. Uh, again, between 250 and 500 words. That's a very brief essay. But it is an essay, so it should be thoughtful. It shouldn't just be a, you know, a few sentences or a paragraph throw off paragraph. It should be your personal individualistic, no secondary sources, no looking at other books, just you and the text, and certainly no use of chatbot or chat GPT or any other AI content generator. It's got to be your own specific response. What were your thoughts? What is your take? What, what did you find interesting in Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Own? And that will be the same for every book. Once we're finished with Virginia Woolf, we're going to read several essays by James Baldwin. And there'll be the usual discussion board and annotations. And then at the end of week, after week four, there'll be the Baldwin personal response. I'm sorry, I forgot to arrange these better. Uh, so yeah, the Baldwin personal reflection will be due, and that will be after we finish reading the Baldwin essays. So that's the other sort of semi-regular uh, thing uh, for the course. You'll write a brief essay, a personal reflection essay, your ideas, your individual unique take on that author and that book. Uh, and that'll be, uh, since there are seven Sorry, I just want to get this right. This after week four will be the last Baldwin reading. Yeah, so after we've, we're finished reading Baldwin, various essays by James Baldwin, there'll be a Baldwin personal reflection due, and then we'll read the pillow book, and there'll be a pillow book reflection due. So seven times during the course of the semester, there will be a personal reflection that will be due. Give you some time to think about it, but basically uh, right after every, um, we finish every book. So now we have three, the, the, the three time a week discussion boards, the weekly annotation. And then after we finish about every two weeks, after we finish a book, there'll be a personal reflection essay that'll be due on whatever author, or whatever book we've just finished reading. So those are the regular and semi-regular assignments. The only other assignments for the course are the midterm and the final. Uh, 
these will be oral exams. That's, that's the big thing. These are not written exams. These are not online exams. These are personal conversations that you and I will have. There will be a sign-up sheet. Uh, give you, um, uh, you, you'll have a, a 15 to 20 minute uh, slot where we will discuss the books. And part of this course is doing well on those exams. Um, I will give you the dates. You'll have a sign-up sheet, but we will essentially we will set up a personal virtual session on Google Meet. It's it's, a, it's just like Zoom, but I don't like using Zoom. Uh, in which you and I will uh, talk about the course, and I'll gauge your uh, familiarity with the text, whether you know them, uh, whether you have ideas about them, and it, it'll be a graded exam, but it'll be an oral exam. It won't be a written exam. It will be a, uh, an exam where you will set up a uh, time uh, from available slots. This is about mid-semester. Uh, in which you have a chance to talk about the books and show what you know. This will be for the midterm. We'll talk about whatever we've read at that point, and then there'll be a final exam where we'll just range over the whole course. Um, so we'll talk more about the oral exams, uh, but essentially that's what it is. It's an informal conversation between you and me, but it's meant to gauge, you know, do you have ideas about the text? Can you respond to very general questions about them? Any exam in a humanities course like this is essentially, does a student have the ability to talk intelligently in an informed way about the course material? As long as you can do that, you'll do fine in the exams. So that's about it. If you have any questions about any of the requirements, about how to access texts, about the scheduling of assignments for the course or anything like that, please, please feel free to contact me at the Temple email or my cell phone, which I've given in the syllabus and also in the homepage of the course.